video is brought to you today by Ghost Tags. This is my own company that I started because I wanted a glow in the dark air tag case. These things are awesome. You can stick them on your backpack, on your dog's collar, and you will be able to find it at night. We've got two colors, blue and green. They've got great reviews. Go check them out. Links to them down below. Now on to the video. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I have a really cool one for you guys. We're going to be going over every single new feature that I have found so far in iOS 18. So you're going to want to sit back, relax and enjoy the video. I know there's a ton of other videos going over these things, but I think I found some stuff that most YouTubers didn't find. Obviously, I think the first thing you're going to notice here is the look of this home screen. In fact, if I scroll over here, you're going to see I've got my passwords app just sitting there right in the middle because yes, you can now actually drag app icons wherever you want on the screen uh, within the grid format, but there can be blank spaces in between. This is really cool. It gives you a lot more customization of the look and feel of your home screen. I think a lot of people are going to like this. Now, the next thing you're probably noticing is that I have dark mode icons. And yes, they look really, really good for the most part. I think the mail app can use some work just because it the contrast isn't quite right. But overall, it looks pretty decent, right? Well, these can be changed on the fly. So if you hit edit when you're in wiggle mode and then hit customize, you're gonna see this new tray at the bottom. From here, you can first choose small or large icons, which is something that uh, a lot of other YouTubers are missing. That is pretty cool right there that you can instantly enlarge your icons. Maybe they're too small for you. Maybe you just want the cleaner look without the words under them. There you go, you now have large icons. Next up, you can choose between automatic dark light and tinted mode. So right now I'm in dark mode, but if I switch to light mode, that's normal. As you can see, everything looks exactly as you'd expect. You can do large mode for these as well if you like but I'm gonna go back to small, and now I'm going to switch over to tinted. Now, as you saw there, I immediately, as soon as I click tinted, it automatically tinted these with what the OS thinks will look the best. Now, this doesn't really look that good, but I can go ahead and change this all I want. I can change the saturation right here, as well as the overall color. So if I wanted this to be, I don't know, bright green, there you go, you can do bright green. So you can find something that works for you, uh, everyone's taste is going to be different. Personally, I don't even like it. I just go back to dark mode and I'm happy with that. Now you can instantly switch your whole phone from light to dark mode right here with this little toggle. So I'm going to keep mine in light mode just for the video, but I do prefer dark mode in day to day life. So that's the quick app customization for your home screen. Let's move on to the next cool new thing. All right. So this next one is that widgets have a whole new mechanism for moving them around. So here is the batteries widget. If I grab this corner right here, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. I mean, it's a little glitchy, I will say that, but it does work and it's pretty cool. Now this one doesn't have an app icon, but if this was the weather app, I could literally drag it all the way down and it would just turn into an app icon. So this is really cool. It's a whole new way to interact with widgets. Uh, obviously you can move them around and edit them, but it makes editing your home screen a lot easier. Next up, this is something that a lot of people have been asking for, but Apple just hasn't done it. And that is to require face ID if you want to use an app. Let's just say I want to lock down the photos app. If I press and hold on it, I can now click require face ID. And when I do that, it's going to lock down this app and not let anyone in it until they scan and it authenticates that it's me. However, it will also block photos access from other apps like Instagram, Facebook, X, all those different apps, they will be completely locked out of photos. So if someone tried to bypass it and say, oh, well, I'll just go into the Instagram and then go through their photos that way, you know, by going through their gallery, like I'm gonna post something, no, not gonna work. Apple thought of that, this is really cool. But on top of that, Apple went a step further with iOS 18. So you can actually hide apps and they will show up in your app library down here in the hidden section, which you cannot get to until you authenticate with Face ID. All right, so this next one is super cool. Control Center got a complete revamp. I mean, look at this. This looks so much better, so much more modern. Yeah, it's kind of weird with the round circular icons, but I think they're kind of hinting at that Vision Pro nonsense that they're pushing on people. So yeah, they're circular icons, but I think it looks fine. This might be a hint that maybe in the future we'll get circular app icons, maybe. I don't know, probably not. In the future, you never know. It would be very easy for Apple to just circularize all of the app icons. But regardless, I digress. This is the brand new interface. As you can see, you can swipe and scroll through different pages if you want. You can click up here and get straight to your network connectivity. Of course, you've got your typical brightness and volume sliders. But if you look closely over here, this shows you kind of what page you're on and you can just tap and just go straight to whichever page you want. You also have a power icon up here to turn off the phone. You also have a plus button. Now, if you hit that plus button, you can first of all see that you can drag and make some of these bigger or move them if you want. So this one doesn't move 
but let's find the one that does. So this one up here in the corner, it does move. So you can make that bigger if you want. You can drag these around if you want, if you just grab that little icon and you can also move them as well. Now, something that's also really awesome that Apple added is if you hit add a control, you can scroll through. I mean, there's tons of stuff here. I'm not gonna scroll all the way through, but there's tons of different things that you can now add to your control center to really customize it and make it how you want. And during this demo, I accidentally made a whole new page. So yes, you can make different pages for whatever you want to store on whichever page. So this one is blank right now, but I could add something to this little control center page and just have it dedicated to a specific icon. Now, while we're in here, I do just wanna show you a brand new feature. It's called vehicle motion cues. So if you get car sick pretty often, try this out, all right? So I'm gonna turn it on right now just so you guys can see it. Uh, there are these dots. So if I move my phone left and right, you can see those dots kind of move and it kind of imitates as if I was driving. That's kind of the visual cue that your brain expects, depending on how fast you're going, the direction. Now, I don't have motion sickness, so I can't really test it and tell you if it works, but if you guys do have motion sickness, you might wanna try that out. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can just easily put it in your control center, activate it anytime. All right, so check this out. I haven't seen a single other YouTuber mention this yet, or at least figure it out. If you turn on the flashlight, yeah, you get this cool new animation at the top here, uh, but this actually does something and there's a reason that the animation is so big so first of all you can go up and down with the brightness of the flashlight sure makes sense but see up here now it's very very small right there that means somehow i don't know how apple is directing the light and pinpointing it right here but you can also spread out the light it's very difficult to do actually i keep messing it up but if you kind of go like this i'm going to turn it all the way up this is now a super spread out light so it's more diffused and then I'm gonna go back to how I like it, so kind of like that. And now it's super bright all in one spot. So that's why this animation is so big for anyone wondering. It's so that you can kind of, they need to change it obviously a little bit because it's very hard to choose you know, how pointed you want it. But this is how I'm gonna keep it, uh, super bright and all in one line, so just like that. Just something cool that I found that I think you guys might like. Also, one other thing, a lot of people say they don't use the action button. I use it all the time for the flashlight, so I would be surprised if more people didn't. So if you're using it for the camera and you just never use it, switch it to the flashlight. You might actually use it sometimes. Now, while we're talking about you know the flashlight, let's talk about how you can now actually change the little icons down here, the flashlight and the camera. So if you hit customize and you go to your lock screen, you can actually click and remove it. And now you can choose whatever you want. So say you don't want the flashlight, you want, uh, I don't know, maybe you want to launch your alarm clock, maybe you want to open up Snapchat, maybe you want to open an app. You can actually choose to open any app you want. So I could choose to open up X, I could choose to open up a smart home app, anything I want, I can have right there. So I'm gonna put it back to flashlight just because I'm used to it, but you can change those at will anytime very easily now. All right, so this next one, I'm gonna put it up on screen because I'm not gonna open up my photos app right here on camera, but basically there's a whole new redesign for the photos application. All It's all on one page, uh, one panel, and at the top, you can see all of your current photos. And if you scroll down, you got some AI, like collections and stuff you can go through. Searching photos is a lot easier now, supposedly it's better, but there's a whole theme of this video in case you haven't noticed. Uh, a lot of stuff ain't working yet. Like for example, Siri's supposed to look cool. It doesn't yet, it just looks like normal Siri. Uh, it doesn't actually do half the Apple intelligence stuff that they said. Actually, it doesn't do any yet because that's not coming until summer. But we're gonna talk about that here in a minute and I'm gonna have a little mini rant for you guys. Now in the phone app, if you start typing a number, it will now give you suggestions on who you want to call. So if you start typing the first couple numbers in their uh, phone number, it will suggest that person. So you don't have to type out the whole thing. So nice, I'm so glad that Apple finally did that. That is going to save me a lot of time. Now you can also record calls in the phone app. Apparently it's gonna tell the other parties that you're recording, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, Apple baked that into there and it can also do transcription as well. So you can go back and read it. Right, so the elephant in the room, the passwords app. So yeah, Apple launched their own, you know, Bitwarden slash one password competitor here. Uh, I don't even know where it got these passwords that it's got right now, cause uh, I don't even use Keychain. So I guess it just automatically saved this stuff. I'm probably not gonna use this just because I already have a password manager that I use and like, uh, but I guess if you wanted to, you could use this. It's not gonna be probably quite as uh, feature rich as some of the others like Bitwarden or 1Password. Uh, I highly recommend you check those out as well just to make sure everything fits your needs. But this is a good solution that, I mean, everyone, everyone's grandma, everyone's mom, everyone that's tech impaired, everyone that loves tech, everyone should be using a password manager, okay? There's no excuse. You should not have an easily guessable password at all. Every single password that you have should be different. You should not even know that password. It should just be saved in a safe password manager. If everyone did that, there would be a lot less hacks out there, but 
hey, this is a good start to get everyone kind of used to it and using uh, random passwords for things and stuff that can't be easily guessed. Definitely use it if you don't have one. Uh, maybe you don't wanna pay for one. All right, so next up, we've got settings. So the settings app is different now. And it's not a full redesign. A lot of the leakers were trying to say that there was a full redesign coming for the settings app. So go back and check all the leakers that you thought were legit that you know were saying that the whole settings is gonna be redesigned. Nah, they were completely wrong. You might wanna check their sources. Anyways, here is uh, kind of the redesign. There's a big redesign for the iCloud. So I'm gonna show you that right now. So here is what the uh, brand new iCloud uh, page looks like in settings. It looks really good. It's so much better than it used to be. iCloud, big thumbs up on this interface. All right, but what else? So let's just scroll down here. Oh, wait a minute. Why is that so short? Oh, that's because they put all of the apps into a little drawer here. It's basically a folder. This is where all the app settings have gone. So if I wanna go into clock and see what the, you know, permissions are for it. I just do that. So that's where all of your apps moved. They just put them in a new little folder. Eh, it makes sense. It cleans it up a little. I actually do like this change. Next up, they've changed up the privacy and security page just a little bit. So you can now see, you know, the apps for location services. It says I've got one that's always 34 while using. Eh, not bad. Anyways, tracking all everything looks the same here. And then down here, I can actually see how many different apps have access to things. So a bunch of apps have access to Bluetooth. Do they all need it? I don't know. I might need to go through there and check local network. Definitely need to go through that M microphone motion and fitness. I mean, these are things you want to check. I mean, for some reason, Waze always asks for your motion and fitness. Uh, seems kind of sketchy to me, huh? You might want to turn that off. Anyways, everything else down here is pretty much the same, but it's been tweaked a little bit just to be more 2024 friendly, but overall. Now, if we head into general, this has changed a little bit as well. It actually looks really clean here. I like what they've done. And the software page actually looks exactly the same. Same exact uh, software update. And just to show you guys the build number, there it is, in case you're curious. This is, of course, the first developer beta of iOS 18 for those of you who are wondering. All right, so as I mentioned, a lot of features aren't working. So in Safari, there's supposed to be a bunch of new AI features like to summarize pages and stuff. I don't see it yet. I don't know why it's not there, but hopefully it's coming in the future, but that is something that will be, I mean, it's a basic feature just to summarize a web page. Almost any AI you know, thing can do it, but yeah, that's supposedly coming soon, but not right now. Next up, let's move on to something juicy, and that would be texting with iMessage. Now, iMessage has been, you know, very, very popular amongst the US and WhatsApp is more popular anywhere outside the US. Now, WhatsApp is owned by Facebook, so I personally do not and will not use it just because of their privacy policy and the privacy practices. However, a lot of people do use it, and there are some features in WhatsApp that were needed in iMessage, and now we have quite a few of them. So first off, you can now schedule a message. So just to give you an example, let's say I wanna schedule this text message, I just hit this little plus right here, scroll down a little and hit send later. From here, I can choose a date and time up to two weeks in advance uh, to send this text. So I can't choose any of these dates, whoops. Can't choose any of these dates, it can only go up to the 24th at, uh, I guess, maybe midnight, something like that. So I can schedule this to send at a later date, that way I don't have to think about it anymore, definitely an awesome feature to have. Now you can't actually do it to yourself. I was trying to send a test to myself, but it wasn't letting me. Another thing that you can do now is if you select your text and then you scroll over and do text effects, you can now do some of these pretty cool effects. You can bold it, italicize it, underline it, strike through, and then there's a bunch of these animated effects. Now these are only gonna show up for other iOS 18 users at this time, but it's pretty cool. So let's just go to explode. That's a pretty cool one. Send it and you guys will see here, it explodes. Pretty cool, I could see a lot of people kind of using this and just making cool text things. And then once gen emoji comes where you can make your own emojis and stuff, I think it's gonna be pretty sick. Anyways, that's what's new in iMessage. Now we can also talk about RCS coming to iMessage. Uh, so if you text people with Androids, I don't know why you would do that, but if you do, uh, <laughs> you're gonna have RCS support, which is going to basically make your texting experience better with them. Definitely still not on iMessage level of you know convenience, but hey, it is what it is. You also can now text people via satellite. Now, Apple has not said if this is gonna cost money. I don't understand how Apple could possibly pay for people off grid to be texting their buddies uh, just random stuff, like stupid shit, without having to pay. I mean, satellite costs a lot of money, but hey, they said this is coming, so texting via satellite for non-emergency appears to be coming to the iPhone 14 and newer, uh, so keep that in mind. I would not be surprised if they started to try to make people pay for that, but if they don't, that is an epic win for those of you who go off grid, which actually brings me to my next new feature, which is in the Apple Maps app. And there are now hiking trails that you can download offline 
with topographic maps. I'm not gonna do that and dox myself here, but that is in iOS 18. So maybe that goes hand in hand with that iMessage uh, via satellite. Next up, Mail app is getting updates, but it hasn't come through yet. They're going to be able to automatically categorize your email via AI. So it can automatically kind of prioritize your email for you. Could be useful for people who have cluttered email inboxes, but I always use inbox zero where I try to keep everything out of my inbox unless I need it that day or right away. So I probably won't be using those prioritization and auto categorization features of mail. All right, next up, we've got game mode. Yes, there is a brand new game mode within iOS 18. So if you click on a game, so I'm just gonna open up Brawl Stars here and there you can see game mode is now on. So what this does is it prioritizes the game over just about everything else. So it should make the game a little bit faster and more responsive. It also increases uh, if you're using a controller, it makes that better. Also your earbuds, if you're using AirPods, it will make those response times faster. So you hear stuff a lot quicker and there's less lag. Overall, very nice feature to have, and I'm glad Apple did it. All right, so I mentioned Siri is gonna look different. Here's an image of what it's going to look like eventually. Let's break this down a little bit. Siri is basically going to be part of Apple's new Apple intelligence, AI, okay? So it's not ready yet. Apple didn't ship it. Siri still looks like old Siri, still functions like old Siri. There's nothing new in iOS 18 right now. If you're thinking about getting iOS 18 right this minute for the AI features, don't do it because they're not there yet. They're probably not coming until the public beta comes out. So they said summer 2024, which is probably July. So keep that in mind. Don't rush out and get this for those features because they're not here. Siri is not updated yet. Apple's intelligence is codenamed gray matter internally, and they also reference a waitlist in this code. So that's a little scary for those of you who also wanna jump in on this because there could be a possible waitlist coming up. Apparently there's also wording that says something about a limited preview. So, and they also warn about slow responses. So I don't even know if Apple's intelligence is ready for prime time yet. I don't know what type of servers they're trying to push this stuff off to. Uh, it's very, very confusing. Also, the privacy implications of this are concerning as well. But anyways, just keep that in mind. AI on the phone is baked in now, and it's a little concerning from a privacy perspective, but it's also not even ready yet for us to test. So I have no idea how it's gonna pan out. Just keep that in mind. I'm gonna keep you guys updated. I'm gonna do these videos. Every time there's a new beta, I'm gonna go through and show you guys what's new. Make sure to subscribe. Let's keep going with these new features. Now, something I have literally heard no other YouTuber talk about is rotating Wi-Fi IP addresses. So yes, you can now have your phone automatically uh, update your Wi-Fi IP address on the fly in the background so that you are less easily tracked. Because if you keep the same IP address at uh, a location, it's pretty easy for them to figure out who you are because you always have the same IP address. Now it's gonna rotate them every so often. Now, another thing that's really cool that again, I haven't seen anyone talk about, battery. There is a brand new battery menu in here. In fact, you can now click on charging and change this. Remember, you can only do, uh, before it was 80%, you can now stop the charging at 80, 85, 90, 95, or 100. So you can change that around as you like, and you can see right here, uh, change the limit. I can, I'm gonna set it to 100% because I wanna use my phone uh, because I paid for it. But you guys can you know, limit this if you're paranoid about your battery and scared to pay $100 for a replacement in a couple years, you can turn that on and try to save one or 2% battery health. From what I've heard so far, it really doesn't seem to affect much battery health. So me personally, I want to use my phone because I paid for this thing. I want it to be used at 100% all the time. I don't want this thing dead when I need it. So I'm charging up to 100%, but you can now change it in 5% increments down to 80. That's pretty cool. All right, so you guys have to see this next feature. This is really cool stuff. Apple has implemented, if you guys remember Solver, there was an app called like Solver 3, S-O-U-L-V-E-R. Basically in that app, it would do on the fly calculations. You could just type stuff out. Well, guess what? Apple decided they were gonna do something similar. So if I put, uh, let's say chicken equals $5, rice equals $3, and then I do chicken plus rice equals and it automatically fills it out for me and solves the equation. Now, obviously this is a basic one, but you could make this much, much, much more difficult and you can even change it. So if I'm like, oh shoot, rice was actually $9, it instantly updates that equation and gives you the correct answer right there. On top of that, if I draw it out like 12 plus three equals, I can hit solve right here and it will give me that answer. And it, the cool thing is it even showed it in my handwriting. So you can see it's kind of fixing my handwriting as well. So let's do another one. Let's just do like 79 times three, three, eight equals. I have no idea what the answer is, but I'm assuming Apple will be able to solve that for me. So let's click on it right here, done, tap, solve. And the answer is 26,000, what the heck was that? It's a little glitchy, but 
I should be able to move this. There we go, 26,702. And this is glitching all over the place, but that's really cool. I mean, this can just do handwriting. I remember actually talking about this with my friends when I was in school a long, 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 long time ago. I think it was in high school at the time. It was literally like uh, magic. I was like, man, wouldn't it be so cool if you could just write something out and it could solve it? And this is at the time where smartphones were just becoming to catch on. We were like, man, wouldn't that just be so cool to just, you know, write something out and just have the notebook or tablet be able to solve it. And, you know, we were all talking about that. That would be so cool. Well, guess what? The future is here. It can now do that. Uh, it's just so cool to see something that seemed impossible just 10, 15 years ago is now right here in the palms of our hands. This is crazy. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is the calculator app. They have really added a ton of new features here. If I hit this little button here, I can go to scientific. I can go to math notes, which is exactly the same as the notes app where I can just add a new one. I can type in something or I can just do handwriting just like I did before. But what's also cool is you now have, if I go back to the calculator, convert. So you can now actually convert currencies. So if I did 100 USD, and I wanna put that in, let's say Philippine pesos, boom, 100 USD is 5,865 pesos right now. And I can swap this and switch it. So if I wanna figure out what 30,000 pesos is, it's 500 bucks. So pretty cool to be able to do that. Uh, another cool thing that's added is history. So you can go through that. Uh, if you do something with where you hit the equal sign, you can save it to your history. Let's go back to basic here and let's clear this out. Let's turn off convert and let's just do 900 plus three. It doesn't clear it out anymore. It actually just shows you uh, up there at the top what you typed in before. Very, very nice additions to the calculator app. I'm super happy they did that. Definitely not an app you use every day, but when you do, it's always good when it gives you a good experience. It's also on the iPad now as well. Another thing that's not here yet is Genmoji, where you can create your own emojis by telling AI whatever you want and it will do it. Image Playground is also an AI feature that's not here yet. I will show you guys all these once it comes out. So stay tuned to the channel, subscribe down below. Now something else that hardly anyone has noticed, watch over here near my finger in that black bar area when I press the volume up. See how it, did you see how it kind of jumps out? Watch, I'll do it again. I'm gonna hold it this time. I don't know if you guys could see that, but it moves, even the power button does the same thing. Very cool stuff. I think Apple's doing this because this is just a theory. In the future with the iPhone 16 or 17, there's not gonna be any like physical buttons like this. You're, they're gonna be taptic and you're gonna want little feedback like that on the screen. It's gonna help your brain register that yes, you clicked something even though it's not a real button. That's just a, just a theory, but it is what it is. That's what I think. Now the calendar app now has reminders built into it. It's very similar to how Fantastical did it, in my opinion, but I think it looks really good. So I've actually turned off the reminders because my reminders, the way I use it, it cluttered this up too much. You can see now they have completely different little icons here for the different day views uh, for the dots. And it looks really clean. I really like what they've done. So there's some new views in here. I can't go through it because it's got a lot of personal stuff on it. Go, but go through your calendar app if you have this and just kind of take a peek around. It's pretty cool stuff. Something else that's pretty cool is you now have live audio transcription within the notes app, which you can do, uh, but you have to make sure that you enable the live transcription before you start the recording. Otherwise it won't work. Also, there is a new eye tracking feature within iOS 18 and where it can track your eyes and select things just by what you're looking at. Pretty cool stuff. That's going to be very helpful for people with disabilities, but also just, you know, if you wanna try it out sometime, maybe your hands are full, maybe you're cooking chicken or raw meat or something, and you don't wanna be touching your phone, you could just use the eye tracking. But again, it's in beta one right now, so it's not super polished. I would hold off and wait just a bit. Anyways, those are the new features that I have found in iOS 18. I know this is a long video, but I'm going to be putting out new videos, so you're gonna to wanna to watch them all in order. So you're gonna watch this one first, and once the next beta comes out in a couple of weeks, I'll make another video showing you what's new. And once Apple finally releases those AI features, there's gonna be a huge video going over that because I've got some questions. I My background is in cybersecurity, so I wanna know what the heck Apple is doing with all of this AI stuff and pushing it to the cloud and how that's working and if it's even secure and private. So we'll see about all that. I will have videos on it. If you liked the video, hit the big thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.